The coral reef seawall at 123 Bay Point Drive Northeast overlooks Tampa Bay and the city of St. Petersburg, Florida. The seawall is 90 feet long, 6 feet high, used 100 tons of concrete, and took a year to complete. It started with an idea when Roger Gatewood needed to replace the seawall on his newly purchased home. Gatewood is a fan of offshore sailing, loves the water, and enjoys the sea life that inhabited its backyard. When he said, why build an ordinary seawall, that was all I needed to hear. As an oil painter, I had very little experience with sculpture, but I began to study what such a project would take. The design idea was a coral reef, as if you have a view beneath the water. After making some preliminary drawings, I began to call seawall contractors and luckily found Pete Sapp. I made a very rough 4 inch high sample with modeling clay to show him the idea. Sapp was the son of Dan Sapp and Sons and said he had never seen or done anything like it. But I want to try, he said, and began the worrisome calculations of load ratios and the rebar fortress he would need to support it. With clear guidelines as to simplicity of shapes and bevel requirements, I sought out a place to build the massive molds required. Creative Arts Unlimited was a local business that did store and museum displays. They would be able to translate line drawings into a CAD program and a machine cutter that would be the bare bones of the mold sculpting. I used colors and a number system to indicate depth of cuts between 1 and 6 inches. The sculpting material would be 6 by 8 foot panels of dense styrofoam. Each of the seven main panels would have six one-inch layers, and each sea creature and coral would need to be sculpted in reverse with sandpaper and spackle and then set back into the scene. The deepest carve in the mold would be the most prominent part of the wall. I worked all summer in Creative Arts open warehouse with only floor fans to keep cool. As the design began to come together, each beveled edge had to be checked to make sure it would release when the concrete was dry. Pete Sapp did a two-foot test panel that seemed to work for the depth. While the molds were being hard-coated for strength, Sapp was busy preparing the site with rebar reinforcement. There was a lot of buzz in the seawall contracting community that this project was doomed to fail, but Sapp was confident in his calculations. With hurricane season over, it took two full days to lower the molds into place, build the wooden framework, and pour the concrete. It had to be poured in three passes in order to allow each layer to set up before adding to the concrete load. Wanting the historic project documented, we invited the St. Pete Times to cover the process, adding some extra stress in the event it failed. After a day to dry, the first one inch deep end cap mold came off neatly and in one piece. The rest of the five and six inch depth molds came off in fragments that had to be cleaned up quickly so they did not blow into the water. The world's first poured bas relief seawall was a success, but the hand carved molds would not live to be used again, making it truly a one of a kind sculpture. The seawall is designed to last at least 70 years, far longer than any of us who worked on it. Knowing what's underneath it, I would not be surprised if it is there forever. It's not unusual for passing boats to slow down, take pictures, or for families to pause to enjoy it. Slowing the boats is also good for the manatees, dolphins, and rays who like to drop by, as well as whoever comes to enjoy living there.